good night and welcome to another edition of Sports Monday. I am Paul Lopez. We are now in week four of the William Dawson Sprite Digi Youth Basketball Tournament 2023. This week's matchups took us to Hattieville, where a total of seven games were played. We start with the first game of the day between the dynamic Crawl Road Boys and the skillful Rockville Hard Knocks. The starting whistle blows and it's Crawl Road Boys with the first possession. A three-point attempt misses. The rebound goes to Rockville Hard Knocks. On the other end, Rockville's number nine goes in strong for the drive. Misses the easy layup. Ball is rebounded and tossed to the other end of the court for a quick and easy layup. On this play, number nine creates the screen and the space inside. As his teammate is double teamed, he gets the pass on the inside for an easy bucket. Here again, Rockville's defense is fast asleep as the ball is tossed over to number 11 who catches his own rebound off the missed layup and banks the second to 10 points. In the second quarter, the ball is in Crawl Road Boy's possession. Number one dribbles to the free throw line and shoots. It bounces off the rim. His teammate collects the rebound and makes it count. An easy steal here for Crawl Road and they are able to capitalize on the play. In the third quarter, Crawl Road Boys continues to dominate the game, but here is a beautiful play under the rim by Rockville. In the fourth and final quarter, Rockville is showing fatigue as number 10 for Crawl Road goes to the rim and draws three defenders, leaving his teammate under the rim wide open for the bucket. That game ended 39 to 27 points in favor of Crawl Road Boys. They dominated the rebounds, had more second chance points, and less turnovers throughout the course of the match. The dominant 501 Falcons took on Cassava Utes in Game 2. The starting whistle is blown and the ball is quickly taken to the rim. Passed out, shot attempt, and a miss. 501 Falcons Raymond Gongora with the rebound. Here is number 11 for Cassava Utes with the ball at the three-point line. He fires off, and that is money, folks. On the other end, Luani Caetano goes in for the drive. Gungara gets the pass and powers his way up to the rim for the basket. Here is another three-point attempt from Cassava Boys. Bounces off the rim. The ball gets into the hand of number two, Justin Bailey, on the fast break. He makes it look effortless. Starting off the second quarter, Bailey throws in the ball to Hemans. It gets inside to Gongora, who is unstoppable under the rim. He makes the bucket and draws the foul. Here's a beautiful pass from Bailey to Gongora at the free throw line. Gongora with another two points on the scoreboard. 501 Falcons is up in the third quarter. Here, Luani Caetano slips and takes a hard fall. The ball is turned over and a beautiful bucket is made on the other end. Bailey with the pass to Tench. Tench passes back to Bailey in the paint and he drives in through standing cones for the layup. On this play, Caetano passes from half court to Hemans under the rim. Number seven for Cassava Boys reads the pass and executes a solid block that would be heard around the village. But in the end, 501 Falcons flew above Cassava Boys to take the victory. And from basketball, we move into a bit of football action. As the Antony Maulers on their 13th Mundialito tournament continued on Saturday, Belize United took on Pickstock. It is the first of three periods. Three minutes into the game, Pickstock kicks the ball from the left corner. It is deflected out to number 11, Jonathan Garay, who is all alone. He runs down the ball, faces off the goalkeeper, and puts it in for the first goal of the match. Six minutes in, number 15 makes the pass to Garay on the left wing. He fires and the ball is deflected. Asir Ganeer follows behind and launches at the goalkeeper. But that one is stopped. Less than a minute later, Pickstock throws in the ball. Garay is right there to intercept the ball. Pickstock regains control momentarily. Quick defensive thinking by Lozano sends the ball back to Garay. He pivots inside the penalty box. The goalkeeper loses his footing. Garay fires and it goes into the net. That game ended 2-0 in favor of Belize United. Belize's under-20 women's national volleyball team is returning home from Mexico after a tough loss at the Continental Championship and Pan-American Cup. 
Team Belize played matches against Guatemala, Costa Rica, Puerto Rico, Cuba, and Mexico. In all of these matches, Team Belize lost three sets to zero. At the end of the tournament, Team Belize placed eight. Also, we would like to say a huge congratulations to the Stan Creek Under-20 men's team for winning the Football Federation of Belize U-20 Championship. The MVP award went to Leopoldo Vasquez. He scored two goals in the finals. The most goals award went to Dejan Daniels. Carlos Palacio received the Best Goalkeeper Award. And finally, the Belize Elite Basketball League is in playoff season. On Saturday night, the Orange Walk Multipurpose Stadium came alive with the first match of the semifinals between Orange Walk Running Rebels and San Pedro Tiger Sharks. The San Pedro Tiger Sharks defeated Orange Walk Running Rebels to gain an advantage in the best of three series. This weekend, the Belize City Civic Center will come alive as the Benes Belize Hurricanes take on the Dangriga Dream Ballers in their first match of that series. Well folks, that's all we have for you with tonight's coverage of Sports Monday. Until next time, have a good night.